Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, the oldest and the newest combat sport. Bare Knuckle Fighting had its last champion in 1889, ending the sport's chaotic beginning without weight divisions or round limits and no referees. Over a century later, Bare Knuckle Boxing returned with a modern spin. It's time to knuckle ah! Today, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is regulated by athletic commissions and has become a highly technical and specialized form of combat sport that has drawn top athletes from all disciplines of martial arts. Bear Knuckle Fighting Championship presents BKFC Knuckle Up Fight Series. Crescent Tools presents our tale of the tape for this bout at 145 pounds. Louis Lopez versus Dylan Schulte. Sean, everything here almost identical. It's not going to be about who has a reach advantage, who has a height advantage. It's who's going to come out here and have a better strategy in the game plan, Sean. Dylan Schulte made his BKFC debut this past April. He defeated Derek Gates by first round KO. You can see here right now just the measure time is waiting for his opponent to come in. Heavy punches being thrown right there. Caught him right with a good left hook right on the button. Boom. Got it right in the nose. And that, was a, that was a painful shot right there. Pono could not get up after that good, devastating left hook. Dylan Schulte enters 1-0 in BKFC. He's a veteran of seven professional mixed martial arts bouts. He's had one in pro boxing, one in pro kickboxing. Schulte in our fighter meeting with a smile on his face said, against Derek Gates in my BKFC debut this past April, I had a take one to give one mentality. After having fought once in bare knuckle, I no longer have that mentality. Funny how many people say that, Sean. Pretty much everybody understands now he wants to stay outside, pick his shots better, and then explode inside, but then get right back out. Cannot let his opponent back him up, though. Schulte also talked about something that I think is very smart that we don't hear a lot from fighters level changes he said constant level changes on my movement and straight punches to the body does not want to brawl here what we talked about earlier he's not in the trade and punches wants to get inside outside feels like he's better both places but he has to utilize his speed and his accuracy he does not want his trade punches because you never know what's going to happen in that situation Louis Lopez made his PKFC debut last November. He defeated Gabe Sacchetti by first round TKO. And here right here, wild fight. A lot of action for both guys. Great job for Lopez. You could just see this young man just loves the fight. Action packs, takes one to get one, but nothing seemed to bother him. Every punch he took just motivated him to hit his opponent even harder. Look at that, just continue to take punches. Very dangerous style. But if you have a good chin and you have a good punch, sometimes it works. Not good for longevity, but sometimes it's worked very effective after the video. You can tell this guy just likes to fight. It's what he wants to do. Come in here tonight. Not necessarily one to trade, but definitely wants to put on a show for the fans. Pass from here in Great Falls, Montana. This is his fourth bare knuckle bout, his third promotionally in BKFC. He's also had three pro MMA bouts, one in pro kickboxing. Lopez said, my evolution as a bare knuckle fighter, I'm working on keeping my chin tucked, breathing from my nose as opposed to my mouth. He said he wants to utilize a lot more, faints his time, wants to be patient, take his time. Look for the right time to pivot on that right foot and throw the right hand. Lopez said, I expect my opponent, Dylan Schulte, to set a very high pace. I'm going to slow that down and make this a fight at my own pace. I'm very comfortable fighting backwards. I'm not going to run into the pocket, swing, and try to look for an early knockout. Was unhappy with his performance last time. He says he feels like he has something to prove, not to us, but to himself. we go to Jeff Houston. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Tusk Ultra Premium Kratom. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears orange and black. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight, 145.6 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at 1-0. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, here is Dylan, the villain, Schulte. And across the ring, his opponent, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears white and black. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall. His official weight, 145.2 pounds. His bare knuckle record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Great Falls. Montana! Here is Louis Lopez! And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Dylan Schulte told us, I think Louis Lopez will continually try to walk me down. I cannot let him make me move straight backwards. Sporting touch of hands. Pull of knuckle up from referee Andrew Glenn. Round number one. White and black trucks for Louis Lopez. Red and black trucks for Dylan Schulte. <laughs> counter right hand immediately from Schulte. He timed that well. That was a great counter right hand. Going to the clinch. Fast hands. Left hook nearly landed flush from Lopez. It definitely backed off Schulte. Both fighters swinging big. Huge shots from both. Now snatching the high half time from Lopez and pushes off for space. Now we'll see how that's ruled by referee Andrew Glenn. He rules it a knockdown. I think that was correct. The hands kept him from falling down. Anytime anything touches besides your feet, that is a knockdown. The only issue would it be ruled a slip or a knockdown. Clearly the hands touched. Anything, as you said, Chris, but the soles of the shoes. Right back comes Schulte off the canvas. Big mouse under Schulte's left eye. Fast hands from Louis Lopez. These guys are just letting it all hang. There's the left hand, and he threw another left hand! One knockdown apiece! Somebody's getting off the canvas to win this bad shot. I love it. This is the fight Chris that Lopez said he did not want to have. He said he wanted to be patient. He said he wanted to be picking his shots. He's not right now. He's, he's falling in love with it. He hit his opponent. He hurt him and knocked it down. He wants to finish it. This is where he's got to be calm, patient. Utilize those things just like that. That'll slow his opponent down a little bit. Ferocious round number one. You see the hand speed, the accuracy of both fighters. Lopez now off his back foot. There's a big right hand, left hand from Schulte. Snap jab from Dylan Schulte. Oh, the counter left jab. And that's knockdown number three of this round. The second suffered by Dylan Schulte. This one looks like it hurt Schulte a little bit more. The way he fell forward was a little troubling right there. Final seconds, round one. Schulte with a smear of blood on his face. That is the end of one of the best rounds in BKFC this year. And three knockdowns, one, one, and one. It wasn't just one side. That was a fantastic round. Here's going to be our first knockdown right here. Lopez just landing a good punch. A couple little counters right there. Just enough to knock Schulte off balance. And here's a nice left hook landing by Schulte right now. Thin enough to not only knock the mouthpiece out of Louis Lopez, but knocked him backwards, knocked him on his butt as well. Just a nice little short left hook from Louis Lopez. As Almost a start. hook jab, Chris. As, yeah, he caught Schulte coming in. As he was coming in, that magnifies the power right there. It's like your weight plus the opponent does the job. It's like Louis Lopez won that round 10 with those two knockdowns. Judging has been on point tonight. And again, that is real-time scoring. Those are the actual three judges scoring ringside, official scorecard. You know it, so did the two corners, the two fighters. Round number two. So how often do you get a knockdown in a round and lose it by two points? Essentially, you're back to 10-10. After two knockdowns, one apiece, and then the 10-8. So I think that scoring is on point. Schulte knows he's down 10 8. A ferocious start to round number two, but there's the counter right hand from Louis Lopez. So these guys are definitely going for the fight of the night. Reset 
from Lopez. Lopez, big right hand, left hand. He's got to close that mouth. He's got to wide open. Can get that jaw broken? That's exactly what Lopez talked about. Keeping his mouth closed, breathing through his nose. Kind of the opposite of what he's doing though right now. He's got to work on keeping that mouth closed. Swelling under Lopez's right eye. He has shown phenomenal hand speed and accuracy. Oh, oh good, good punches. Oh, man, Lopez right there. Break, break. Schulte. Schulte did a great job right there by tying up. He was a little rocked. Willing himself back into this fight. Down twice in round number one. Big exhale from Louis Lopez. 55 seconds remaining round number two. Schulte single-mindedly coming into the pocket. Split on the top of his nose. Rear right up and got counter right hand from Lopez. Into the half-time club. Big shots right hand out from Schulte. That turns Lopez. This is a phenomenal fight. Both fighters giving, both fighters receiving. There's that hook jab from Lopez. Schulte again coming forward. Cutting off space, misses with the step-in right hand. Schulte's coming straight forward in a, in a low position. I'd like to see Lopez turn that punch under to an uppercut. That would land perfectly. Big exhale from Louis Lopez. Off his back foot, but he told us he's very comfortable fighting backwards. He's doing so right now. Half-time ball. Ferocious uppercuts from Schulte. Lopez pulls his fight back to the center circle. Final seconds, round number two. Into the clinch. That is the end of the second round. Pick 
his shots a little bit, be a little bit more judicial with his, with his punching power because you could not waste punches and he's getting too tired to do that. And the great thing about throwing power punches when they land, you hurt him. But when you don't land or when you just wait, you, you, you only have so many of them to throw. Forward movement off the scratch line from Dylan Schulte to start round number four. Confirmation it is 28-28. Lopez 10-8 in round one, the back-to-back 10-9 -back rounds for Dylan Schulte. Consent amongst the three judges. Oh, right hand against the flow of this fight. And that is a huge knockdown landed for Louis Lopez, his third against Dylan Schulte in this bout. What a beautiful counter right there. It's waiting for his opponent to step forward and, and unleash the right hand. Let's see if he goes for the finish right there. Yes, he is. Lopez opening up. Can see the first line lands the left hand and right hand. We might be done if we are. He had the lead, he lost the lead. He got it back and he gets a huge win. Victory for Louis Lopez. What a comeback for Louis Lopez right there. Jeez, he was hurt. He was down, he was tired, and he came back. One punch can change it, and it did right there. Waited for the right time, threw that counter right hand, landed perfectly. Schulte was hurt, he tried to come back and finish, but there was just no way he could, he was still hurt. A definite candidate for BKFC Fight of the Year in 2022. And watch it right here, just countering, countering. Bam, two punches. Left hook followed by the straight right. It was just the way I felt that Schulte fell, fell down right there, the referee was like, no mas, I'm, I'm not letting you go on anymore. When you fall like that, you can just tell you're severely hurt. So what, a much, what a comeback there, Sean. Unbelievable. There so much drama in this fight. Lopez dropping Dylan Schulte twice in round one. In between the two knockdowns, he was dropped by Schulte. Schulte then winning rounds two and three on all three judges' scorecards. 10-9. He had the momentum. He was coming forward. Lopez dropping Schulte and then dropping him again for the final time of this fight to get the fourth round KO. And if you look at the stats right there, very similar, very even. Both guys landing about 50% right there, doing great jobs, feeling a little bit higher. 56 to 48, but I mean, Louis Lopez would land us a box, and it wasn't how many they landed, it was where in the right timing right there. Just a perfect counter, little left hook, straight right down the pipe, that did the job. Huge disappointment, no doubt, for Dylan Schulte. He sees the momentum and quality from Louis Lopez, quality throughout from both fighters. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, calls a stop to this fight at 50 seconds into round number four. For your winner, by KO, Louis Lopez. A victory for Louis Lopez right there. Got off the canvas, dealt with a lot of adversity, dealt with being tired, dealt with looking like it was fading, came back to win. What a great fight, Sean. Phenomenal fight. Such quality from Dylan Schulte, quality and a comeback fighter's heart from Louis Lopez. The winner, by way of fourth round knockout, Louis Lopez defeats Dylan Schulte. Women's 115 pounders, Jenny Savage versus Veronika Dimitrieva. Crescent Tools brings you our tale of the tape. You can see here, Sean, slight reach advantage for Veronika, two inches, not that big of a deal. So probably not going to make a difference. This is going to be who's going to be able to come out there, dictate the pace, and dictate the distance is going to win this fight. debut for Veronika Dmitrieva, based in Sheridan, Wyoming, born in Russia. She is a United States Army veteran. She's had 14 AMI MMA bouts, one amateur boxing match. The 
the fighter meeting, Dmitrieva described herself as a pressure fighter. She said, I want to keep moving forward. Constant counters to work to the inside. I don't know she wants to move forward, wants to stay right in the face of her opponent the entire time. Feels like she has to cut off the ring, and when she gets inside, definitely wants to go to the body to slow her opponent down. Dmitrieva said, I expect heavy pressure from Jenny Savage, my opponent in this strawweight bout. I am going to meet her heavy pressure with more heavy pressure. Jenny Savage, two wins in BKFC, her most recent coming December of last year. She defeated Delaney Bailey by split decision. Right here you can see this try to utilize fast footwork, good hand speed, trying to get in and out, decide when she wants to fight, control the pace, control the range, try to be very technical in her decision right there. Jenny Savage, also a veteran of seven pro MMA bouts, told us that she will open up and take risks to record a clean knockout in this bout. She said, above winning, getting a clean knockout is my goal. Said she will clinch if she needs to, gets inside, wants to utilize a lot of body punches, uppercuts. She feels like she needs this to be a statement win for her. Savage also told us in our fighter meeting, I have to get full extension off of my jab keep looking for the openings to land my left hook persistence is my key to victory so she said she might try and flurry early because this is her opponent's first bare knuckle fight so she wants to jump on her immediately and see if she can take her out really quickly might do that back we go to jeff houston Fight fans of Great Falls, we are set for the next fight of the night, scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the women's strongweight division, presented to you by Eight Men Strong Apparel. Strong has many forms. Find yours. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, she wears black. She stands five feet, four inches tall. Her official weight, an even 115 pounds. Tonight, she makes her bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Sheridan, Wyoming, by way of Apochka, Russia. Here is Veronika, the Russian bomb, Dmitry. And across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, she wears black and gold. She stands five feet, two inches tall. Her official weight, 114.9 pounds. Her bare knuckle record stands at two victories opposite a single defeat. Fighting out of Clarksville, Tennessee, here is Jenny, the Tennessee Gangster Savage. And our referee in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Veronika Dmitrieva told us, I'm going to throw heavy body shots to slow down the forward pressure, the forward movement of Jenny Savage. The bell, round number one. Black and gold trucks for Jenny Savage. Black trucks for the Russian born Veronika Dmitrieva. Big left hand, another left hand. Those are thudding left hands from Jenny Savage. To her credit, Dmitry Yeager walking through them. Back to it, orders referee Andrew Glenn. Dmitry Yeager looked like she was in a rock right there, but she's in. Big left hand, knockdown number one. She's out. We're done, Dmitry Yeager signaling to Andrew Glenn that she does not want to continue. And there's the official action from Glenn. Game, set, match, Jenny Savage, just like that. And that's exactly what Jenny Savage thought she wanted to come and throw it on her opponent because she's never been in a bare knuckle fight before. She didn't know. A lot of people don't understand it. When you get hit, it's different. So when that happens, you don't know how people are going to react. Some people do well, some don't. And right here, Veronica did not. Veronica just like got punched. She said, oh, this is not what I thought was going to happen. I did not like You can see she waves it off right there. Once she got that two-piece, she said, I'm done. It was just one punch. I thought it was the second one. It was just that left hand that did it. And you can see right here. 
faces in the shorts. Hero Nika just didn't like what she was feeling. She got hit with something she was not used to and decided this sport is not for her, Sean. Flat on her back as she was taking the count from Andrew Glenn, Dimitri Yeva waving her arms crosswise. International signal for I am done. No mas. Pouring of emotion for Jenny Savage. Victory number three in BKFC. She is most definitely a force in the women's strawweight division and bare knuckle fighting championship. Jeff Houston is ready. We send it to him now. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 38 seconds into round number one. For your winner by TKO, Jenny, the Tennessee Gangster Savage. Jenny Savage said she wanted to make a statement win, and you're not going to get a bigger statement win than that. She did what she said, come in, Flurry, landed that big punch, and got the KO, Sean. And Savage said, above getting the win, my goal is to get the finish. She got the finish with emphasis. Fast start, fast fight, and a fast victory for Jenny Savage, ending it with that left hand. The winner, by way of first round technical knockout, Jenny Savage defeats Veronika Dimitrieva. A really intriguing bout for you now at 175 pounds. Crescent Tools gives you the tail of the tape for Billy Wagner versus Rome Lindsay. It's like Rome Lindsay has about a two and a half reach into advantage on his length right there. Billy Wagner is usually the one who's going to want to stay outside. Rome probably wants to get inside and land those powerful shots, Sean. Wagner said of Rome Lindsay, he's very strong. I respect his jab. I think he's going to keep switching stances. I want to use my heavy front shoulder stance. Being first is my key to victory. So he said he wants to utilize some body work and then move to the chin afterwards. A couple shots to the body. Usually when that happens, people drop their hands. Chin is wide open. Again, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now sent for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middle eight division. Presented to you by Nerd Focus, the original Think Drink. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black and blue. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight, 169.1 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of 25 fights. And tonight, makes his bare knuckle debut. Fighting out of Topeka, Kansas. Here is Rome, the Black. Lindsay, And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue and gold. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 167.2 pounds. He holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at two and zero. Oh. Fighting out of Browning, Montana, by way of the Black Feet Nation. Here is the undefeated Billy the Kid Wagner. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Mergliata. Rome Lindsay said, I feel I'm going to be physically stronger than Billy Wagner. I have to implement that in the clinch. And Mergliata starts this fight. Rapid fire start from Rome Lindsay. You see the big swings. He's in the black trucks. Blue trucks for Billy Wagner. Wants to utilize that clinch on, but you have to get him in the clinch to utilize it. Huge swings from Rome Lindsay. To the clinch again. Inactive. Separation from Mergliata right back to it. Is he dipping his head coming forward? Wagner from the outside. See the lateral movement of Billy Wagner. One step jab right there. 
Full belief in his one-punch knockout power for Roman Lindsay on full display. First 35 seconds of this fight. And the reset. Big left hand. That was slick from Wagner. Short and sharp now into the clinch. To the body. This is exactly where Roman Lindsay feels that he can take control of this fight. Swing and a miss. Duck under. Counter right hand from Wagner. Lindsay's a tough style for Lindsay. You know he's coming with power. You just have to be very technical and land those counter punches when he misses because he leaves you open. Wagner resetting hands high off of his back foot. They're trying to be first. Ruled a slip by Mergliata. And oh. now the count. It was delayed and now the count. I mean, it did look like it hurt Lindsay. I didn't really see exactly what happened there. First knockdown of this fight. Lindsay swinging big off the canvas. Into the clinch, Lindsay to the body. A right uppercut on the exit from Roman Lindsay. Chant of Billy from this Great Falls, Montana crowd. Billy's just waiting to counter. Good idea on his part, his opponent from such wide punches. That's a counter, and that's a clean knockdown, knockdown number two. That's a body shot, and that's what did the damage right there. That's how you knock down the hawk like that, by hitting him in the body. When Lindsay tells Damer Glada he wants to continue, that is the end of the first round. My low-level pro boxing referee <laughs> career of about two decades ago, I've been caught in that position. We're glad I didn't see it. He didn't think it was a knockdown, but then he looked at the body language of Rome Lindsay. He realized his error. He corrected his error and started to count. You have to be flexible as a pro combat sports referee. Very difficult to see it, bare knuckle. Sometimes it was a glancing blow, but it did damage, and you could tell exactly what you said, Sean. By the way, the, the opponent fell on the ground. The way he was down there, you could just tell he was not quite right. It was because of a punch. No such issues with the second knockdown, that thudding body shot for round number two. See, Wagner still respecting that massive power of Rome Lindsay on his back foot. You have to respect the power of a guy who can hit the ball. Lindsay, those huge swings, just misses with the overhand right. And three on the left hand, left to the body, and to the clinch. Separation left hand, Lindsay just missing with that left hook. Here's the left to the body, that was clever from Wagner. There's that counter right there, just waiting for Lindsay to throw a wild punch in the counter. Swing and a miss, there's the counter timing. But Lindsay still coming forward. I'd like to see Wagner go right back to that body. And we'll see with the overhand right to the body. Wide entry left hand again from Owen Lindsay. Another miss from Lindsay. On the delay, the stagger, and that's knockdown number three. Let's see if he lets us go. See if Wagner tries to finish it off right now. To his credit, Rome Lindsay off the canvas for the third time, still swinging big. Billy Wagner now, make no mistake, can see the finish line, trying to reach it with 35 seconds remaining round two. Into the clinch. Double Avis for Rome Lindsay. You still have to respect that power of Lindsay. If you walk right and you get too aggressive, you're going to knock out yourself. We might be done off the left hand. Hand down, most definitely a knockdown. Now to one knee, taking the count from Mergliata is Rome Lindsay. Rome Lindsay's not getting it. We are done. Billy Wagner just keeps on rolling now. 3 0 in BKFC. Very difficult guy to fight in Rome Lindsay. When he's throwing power like that, it just seems like, oh, all you have to do is counter. Yeah, but if you do it wrong, if you get hit with that, you're probably gonna go to sleep. Great job by Wagner for waiting for the right time, picking shots, picking time, landed good punches, and got the knockout. Hunt from Todd Foster, and this is the finish. Here's a look at that. Just a good straight right, right down the pipe. He is opponent to the punch. It's a nice straight right hand. That's what did the damage right there.
I know Roman Lindsay very well from the Midwest circuit in MMA. I was in attendance in Topeka, Kansas for his first bare knuckle fight. He was game, he kept swinging, he had power, but it was the precision, the timing, the skill set of Billy Wagner, Chris. Billy Wagner did a fantastic job of waiting for the right time, waiting for the right angles, exploded when he needed to and got the victory. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Big Dan Mergliata, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 48 seconds into round number two. For your winner by KO, Billy the Kid Wagner. And like you said, Billy Wagner just keeps on rolling, showing improvement each time. Feels like bare knuckle is a sport for him, and I have to believe him when he puts on performances like that, Sean. Billy Wagner was able to stay away from those huge, powerful swings of Rome Lindsay. Found his range, had the accuracy, had the finish. Victorious by way of third round knockout. Billy Wagner defeats Rome Lindsay. Sold out tonight, and we roll on with this bout in the welterweight division. Dallas Davidson versus Gorion Slaveski, the numbers presented by Crescent Tools. Everything very similar here, reach, height a little bit for Davidson, but Slaveski does have a two centimeter bigger fist. Let's see if that makes a difference, because that surface area, if you can land, bigger fist sometimes means a lot more power. We'll, we'll, we'll see what that means. Haven't really touched on that too much, but Bigger fist, let's see if that makes a difference in this fight, Sean. Two wins in BKFC and two fights for Gorion Slaveski. His most recent June of this year, he defeated Justin Stills by first round. Knockout. And Justin Stills had been a beast before that, but look at this. That, maybe it's that big fist I'm talking about, Sean. Landed perfectly, landed with power. When he lands punches, he hurts people. This is exactly what it did. I mean, Stills was phenomenal when we've seen him before. Just tough as nails. Go the zombie for a reason, but just got hit a lot, hit hard, and just put him out, Sean. Great job done in this fight right here. So, nothing but power in both this guy's hands. Really hitting on all cylinders right now. Feels like bare knuckles. He understands the distance, the timing. He feels like now is his time to really step it up. The lone Macedonian on the BKFC roster. One of the top fighters at 165 pounds in all of bare knuckle, Gorion Slaveski. So 2-0 in BKFC, he's 8-2 in his pro boxing career. Five of those eight boxing wins by way of knockout. So 10 combined pro combat sports wins, seven finishes. Slaveski told us that he's been working and training on putting a bigger focus on being offensive in the clinch. He had no background in MMA coming to bare knuckle. It was all in amateur and then professional boxing. The clinch is relatively new to him. He feels that's the next step in his evolution as a bare knuckle fighter. Feels like he wants to utilize that physical strength that he has to utilize that clinch, but also what to make his opponent miss. And when they miss, make them pay each time. Wants to throw a lot more combos this time as well. Two wins and two fights, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship for Dallas Davidson. His most recent April of this year, he defeated Eric Lopez by second round KO. And you can just see here, very confident is this young man coming in just throwing hard punches the entire time. It seems like something, I don't know if it's in the water with these guys from Montana, but they come and they put on fights the entire time. Feels like he is the most heavy-handed guy in the division. Will the trade punches, but been working on not necessarily training the entire time. Just being smarter. Has that ability, though. He feels like he has that in his back pocket, like right here against Lopez. Wasn't worried. He could get in there and trade. Feels like he has a great chin. Doesn't want to utilize it all the time, but has that in reserves if he needs it. Doesn't want to use it, but has it. That's a great feeling to have. It gives you a confidence that other fighters don't have. Another big pop for another great Falls Montana-based fighter, Dallas Davison. 3-0 overall 
in the sport of bare knuckle. He's also had one pro MMA bout. Davison told us in our fighter meeting through his first three bare knuckle bouts, he feels he's really developed the ability to stay calm in this sport. He said, I'm not rushing. I want to stay long, have a very active jab, but constant smart pressure. That's exactly the thing. Stay long, but with pressure, which is a hard thing to accomplish. Says he wants to stay long, but does not want this fight to go to the judges. Definitely wants to get the knockout in this fight. And this is a fight he actually called. He wanted this fight. Davison said, I believe Gordian Slavesky is going to throw more punches than me in this fight, but I'm going to win by throwing more significant punches. He feels like body punches are the things that he's going to utilize to put his opponent down. To get us started, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight! of the night scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the welterweight division presented to you by crescent tools introducing to you first fighting out of the red corner tonight he wears white and pink he stands five feet nine inches tall his official weight 165.6 pounds he holds an undefeated bare knuckle record at two and oh fighting out of chicago illinois by way of miami florida and Skopje Macedonia. Here is the undefeated Gorian. Go, go, Slavesky. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and silver. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, an even 165 pounds. He is also undefeated at 3-0. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana! Here is the undefeated Dallas, the dentist! in charge of the action, Andrew Glenn. Gorion Slavesky told us he feels that Dallas Davidson will continually be open to his left uppercut as he comes forward, round number one. Black trunks for Dallas Davidson, white trunks for the Macedonian Gorion Slavesky. As the jab comes Davidson. Big right hand, and that's ruled a knockdown and correctly so by Andrew Glenn. The rope supported Slavesky from hitting the canvas. Slavesky looks fine though. It looks like he's more of a flash knockdown than anything. Let's see if how quick, how much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Got off the left hand. One knockdown a piece off the ring ropes. Exactly the same punch really for each guy. Just knocked him back. Didn't really hurt him back, but just knocked him off balance. These guys are two powerful individuals, you know? Big hooks, big swings now from Slavesky. Right hand misses from Davison as he comes forward. Davison into the pocket, right back to the mid-range. See the roll under from Slavesky. Rear right uppercut nearly lands. Now Slavesky to the inside. Good body roll. Nice shots. Firing back is Davison with the naked right hand. Davison taking that body shot well from Slavesky with the left hand. Wild miss from Gorion Slavesky. Left hand. Knockdown number two. And that was just that right-handed fighter versus left-handed, that straight left, literally right down the pipe for Slavesky. That's what led him to that knockdown right there. Third knockdown of this fight, the second recorded by Slavesky against Davison. Slavesky now trying to finish this fight here in round number one. Records the third knockdown against Dallas Davison in this opening round. And that was that body work he did earlier, Sean. A couple good left hand to the left side. Mandatory eight from Andrew Glenn. Left hand to the body. We might be done. Glenn picking up the count. Oh, no, I think he could have a slip. We are not done. The 10 second clap. Slavesky coming forward. Big body shots. We'll see now how Glenn rules this. Says the knockdown came after the bell. We move to the second round. Knock his 
the corner off balance. Another one right there, just continuing to knock his opponent off balance. And there's that good body work being done when we talked about. And that was the one that was called a slip. John, how often do you get a knockdown in the first round and still lose 10-7? Right off this scratch line, and that's ruled a slip by Andrew Glenn. Slavesky on the back side of the first knockdown, and again a slip ruled. And since then, completely taking over this fight. Man, I mean... Davison again almost throwing himself to the canvas, and now being talked to by Andrew Glenn. That's four straight times now Davison has gone down, ruled a slip. He's got to get his feet underneath him. You saw 10-7 from real-time scoring from the three Montana judges against the ropes, and that's clearly a knockdown. Now the mandatory eight to Davison from Andrew Glenn. Eight. Davison is just all over the ring right now. Legs do not seem to be underneath him very well. So basically, he's put on a very hard pressure style where he's ducking down deep. Jared swings from Slavesky on the entry right hand. Uppercut to the body. Those are ferocious body shots. Left hand, left hook lands from Slavesky. Davison playing all defense at the moment. He started this fight by playing offense. You see the close look from referee Andrew Glenn. Yeah. Oh, he's down, he's down. And a big push from Glenn on Slavesky. Oh. Slavesky looks a little offended right now. They got thrown away by the referee. Glenn was trying to send him to the neutral corner. The count of 10 reached, and we are done. And Gorion Slavesky now 3-0 in BKFC. Man. Slavesky is fired up for that performance right there. He was all over him. After he got knocked down the first time, something switched in him. No matter how patient he planned on being before, that was over. He just went at him the entire time. Almost difficult, Chris, to call that a come from behind win, even though Slavesky took the knockdown the first of this fight. He was up immediately and then got his offense going fully. Yeah, you couldn't call that a come behind from behind victory because he did get flash knocked down, but as soon as that was over, he jumped up and did fantastic. I mean, it would have been good to see if that fight went further. Would he have had the energy to continue to go at that pace? Because he just went at a ferocious pace, just continue to come after his opponent. Dr. Don Muzi, the chief medical officer of BKFC, immediate past president of the Association of Ringside Physicians, tending to Dallas Davison. Davison is tough. Again, he entered 3-0 and in bare knuckle, including 2-0 and in BKFC promotionally. He was game. He just simply had no answer for that massive power of Gorion Slavesky. Off the canvas for the Macedonian Slavesky to the full throttle victory. Here it is, Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Andrew Glenn, reaches the count of 10 at 1 minute 24 seconds into round number two. For your winner by KO and still undefeated, Gorion Golgo Slavesky. And Sean, we're going to have to have a number behind Slavesky. This guy's 3 0. And when you have power like that, you're going to be a problem for anybody in this division. Combined with boxing, 11 pro combat sports wins, eight of those by way of finish. Massive power, massive precision from the Macedonian. The winner by way of second round knockout, Gorion Slavesky defeats Dallas Davison.